and welcome to yet another episode of Doctors In. This is me, Nana, with you. Today we have with us Dr. Anthony Okuke, who has been specialized in internal medicine from Al Zawra Hospital, Dubai. Let's welcome him to the program. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. First of all, we would like to know more about you. Right. Um, yes, uh, my name is Dr. Anthony Okeke. I'm a fellow of Royal College of Physicians, London. I'm also a fellow of American College okay. of Physicians. Okay. Uh, I've been practicing internal medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a consultant in the National Health Service UK for many years. Mm -hmm. and about, How many years have you have been there? Uh, I've been in UK for about oh, 20 okay. years. Okay. So about two years ago, I was recruited as one of the pioneer uh, consultants to come and set up this uh, um, elegant JCI accredited hospital. Okay. So how do you feel after coming to UAE? Yes, it's fine. Well, the first thing you will notice when you, uh, when you come from a place like the UK mm -hmm. because of the cold weather is the it's sunshine sort of all the yeah. time. So the sunshine here <laughs> makes it a bit pleasant. Uh, of course, that's why Dubai is a very hot spot for holiday makers. So the weather is good apart from summer, but mm -hmm. it's generally it's okay. So, so now coming on to the topic, could you explain to a layman what actually internal medicine is? Uh, internal medicine um, is a practice whereby a doctor mm -hmm. uses the patient's symptoms, some labor laboratory uh, assessment mm -hmm. to enable the doctor to make a diagnosis. Okay. Now, internal medicine has been in practice from early 19th century. Mm -hmm. For the word internal medicine uh, uh, came from a German. It was during the time some American physicians who were trained in uh, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, who were trained in using laboratory and uh, clinical science to make a diagnosis. So the original internal medicine started way back in 19th century from Americans who were trained in Germany. Now, what does it involve? It involves looking at adults presenting with clinical conditions, which is non-surgical. Now, it looks into a variety of bodies, from all organs uh, to all systems. Mm -hmm. So internal medicine is a very wide area of medicine. Now, there are some subspecialties in internal medicine. Uh, under the internal medicine, we have the cardiology, mm -hmm. which is heart. You have nephrology, which is the kidney. You have um, the gastroenterology, dealing with your gut system. You have the endocrinology, dealing with the hormones. Uh, you also have the pulmonology, dealing with your chest, rheumatology. So there are about 10 or more uh, internal medicine subspeciality mm -hmm. in this hospital. Uh, I also have interest, apart from general internal medicine, I also have interest in cardiology, okay. uh, which I have um, postgraduate training in that. Mm -hmm. So what are the scope for internal medicine? Yes, the scope uh, of internal medicine, especially in Azara Hospital, is very wide. Generally, the scope of internal medicine is very wide. Uh, internal medicine has been positioned as the uh, bedrock or the core of acute medical care in our hospitals. Mm -hmm. So variety of conditions which present some diagnostic challenges tend to involve the uh, internist. Mm -hmm. Sometimes patient doesn't present with a clear cut symptom okay. and present to the ER, the ER doctor become very confused mm -hmm. where to send the person. Uh, the person they had to send it to had to be an internal medicine uh, specialist who need to figure out what the problems are. Mm -hmm. uh, in this hospital, uh, uh, I do see, uh, or my department do see, uh, conditions ranging from acute uh, um, metabolic uh, mm -hmm. issues, special things that deal with salt, uh, potassium, uh, sodium, electrolyte issues, disturbances, okay. uh, to um, medical uh, poisonings, people mm -hmm. taking overdoses, 
uh, to uh, benign hematological. Hematological means something that had to do with a bone, uh, some sort of anemia, some sort of um, clotting disorders. Uh, we also look into uh, clots in the veins, or what we call deep vein thrombosis, um, clot in the lungs. Um, in addition, we also can see cases with infection of all spectrums from tropical medicine to rare mm -hmm. infective disorders. So, um, infection of all spectrums, again, infection related to um, some diseases, um, systems like chest, uh, urinary tract, okay. gastrointestinal tract. Mm -hmm. So these are cases we see. Um, again, internal medicine with bias to cardiology like mm -hmm. heart failures, the hypertensions, I do see these conditions too. Mm -hmm. So now coming on to the challenges. So what are the challenges in internal medicine? Yes, uh, like I did mention to you, the, the challenges in internal medicine is the internist is always the, uh, the puzzle uh, solver in, in medicines. Um, uh, internal medicine, unlike other specialties, where the diagnosis could be a bit more straightforward. People see it and get to the Point. In an internal medicine, you need to do a lot of very good history, a very good examination, mm -hmm. and in some cases, you may need to do a very detailed uh, investigations. In fact, as an internist, you have to have a very wide knowledge of the disease base, thereby having what we call a very wide differential diagnosis to enable you to arrive mm -hmm. um, at a diagnosis. Sometimes, some of these patients may have what are called more than one or two disease conditions. Some of their baseline disease condition may be having effect mm -hmm. on their current presentation. Okay. So you have to take into cognizance the comorbidity okay. these patients are having. So these are uh, challenges because you also, you also take it into their psychological states. Mm -hmm. um, so as an internist, you need to integrate both the psychological state, their comorbidity state, uh, on top of the uh, presenting uh, diagnosis challenges that are given to you. Mm -hmm. The other challenges we, we face or face in this environment is uh, practicing internal medicine is the patient mix. Mm -hmm. um, well, some of the patients you rely on in, on interpreters. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the history taking and assessment is a little bit suboptimal because you are not directly uh, communicating with the patients. Mm -hmm. So that's in where of uh, history of patients. The other challenges we found in this environment is people are sometimes don't come back for their follow-up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are not aware of, uh, they are aware, but mm -hmm. uh, they sometimes go against medical advice. Oh. It's not financial related, although in small location it may be financial related, mm -hmm. but understanding the gravity of their conditions uh, they appear to have uh, less insight. Mm -hmm. That uh, aspect has been a challenge uh, okay. to me. Uh, people living against medical advice midway into their treatment or midway into their investigation, they disappear to uh, no known uh, area. There's one particular case, it was a very sad case, and um, um, this is somebody uh, who had a very, um, a very life-threatening conditions, in spite of all advice mm -hmm. and um, signs against living against medical advice. Um, I didn't know what happened to this mm -hmm. patient, but so these are the case okay. mix patients, either cultural related, okay. uh, whether it's educational related, 
Uh, when people live against medical advice, um, it causes me a, quite a lot of concern. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the challenges I've seen in it, practicing internal medicine here. Um, in terms of enjoying the diagnostic puzzles, and uh, that's been part of it. That's the trail of the internal medicine anyway. Is there any cases of interest that you would like to share with us? Yes, there are numerous cases of interest. Um, like I said, most time they come up with very bizarre uh, symptoms or may come about with 10 symptoms. Uh, doctor, I've got pain here, I've got tiredness, I've got dizziness, and I've got this and that. So it's up to you to start synthesizing. There is a young chap uh, from India subcontinent. Okay. I think he's in his early 20s. Um, he presented with cough. And he has seen very other specialists. I'm not mm -hmm. putting down other specialties down. He has also had a lot of cocktail of treatment. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, which uh, challenges okay. which I didn't mention is people before they consult you here have taken a variety of medicines from antibiotics, which you get over mm -hmm. the counter here. So that tends to dilute um, your uh, initial presentation and diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Right, back to this young chap who has a cough for over four weeks, has had numerous antibiotics, and has also had steroids because at some stage it was label asthma. Mm -hmm. Has had numerous visits to one or two ER uh, in this uh, area. And uh, presented at ER two times and had a bit of nebulizer and was asked to come and see me. Mm -hmm. Right, so the interesting bit about this patient is um, he looked well when you see him. Apart from when you listen to his chest, there are mm -hmm. signs uh, which look as if it's an asthma. But it, every other thing about asthma doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. So what strikes me was um, a blood test we call complete blood count, which is the basic thing we do. Um, so there is an aspect of that blood test which we call eosinophil. Okay. I could say this is the second time I'm seeing a very highly raised eosinophil. Uh, count. The first time was my early years as consultant in the UK mm -hmm. uh, for very unrelated condition like this. So that was very intriguing uh, to me. And then I went further to dig in to see, uh, like I said, I said, internet. Then you had to bring in so many collateral thinkings. What is possible reason for this? Um, eventually, I was able to quickly make a diagnosis from that and other things. However, I asked my colleague in the pulmonology um, to have a second look to make sure I haven't missed anything. Mm -hmm. And he did agree with uh, my diagnosis, uh, which is what they call um, tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. Mm -hmm. Now, this condition is not common, but it's fairly common in the Southeast Asians, and also typically common in young people. It's a condition usually due to uh, a kind of worm called filaria. Uh, when you've been exposed to this worm, you may or may not be aware. So this worm can spread through your system mm -hmm. and uh, cause your body to release a lot okay. this a type of blood, uh, or part of white blood cell called eosinophil, and which can cause you all sorts of problems. Now, the challenge in treating this chap is the specific medicine to treat this condition is not available in UAE. Mm -hmm. Again, UAE has its own other issues. Not all commonly used drugs are available here because of uh, pharmacy regulation. So we had to get this medicine from India. Okay. Um, so at the end, it was a rare diagnosis, mm -hmm. uh, which 
I was able to make the diagnosis fairly quickly uh, without even resorting to so many uh, investigations. And the outcome was very good. So that is what made me to share this with you. <laughs> there is another uh, case also. Um, again, this is uh, a case of somebody who presented with a young man, presented with um, very high fever. He has presented to the ER on many occasions, two or three times. Of course, he's been given something to reduce the temperature. On the second, third time, he doesn't want to be discharged. He wants to get sorted out. So we got him admitted, very high fever. And uh, x-ray is fine. He's been on antibiotics, as I said, usually from other sources, and still not getting better. Now, what compounded to this patient's care is is very, very anxious. It's understandable, a young man uh, not knowing what is going on. So, he was admitted, and we start working him up. Okay. Um, again, he, he, he had, eventually had a pneumonia, uh, which initial, looking at the initial x-ray, was didn't show much of a sign. Mm -hmm. um, then I did get a CT scan, which uh, revealed they had uh, quite evolving pneumonia. Now, all right, what is causing the pneumonia? So the usual uh, causes of pneumonia have been looked sent off, and the blood cultures, everything come back negative. Now the cause of his pneumonia was due to. Um, a kind of virus, what we call cytomegalovirus pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So he had a cytomegalovirus pneumonitis. This is a condition which uh, can present with a very, very high fever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also more common in young people. Um, treating it from the conventional point, uh, nothing may change because they sometimes get secondary yeah. infected with mm -hmm. bacteria. So then that becomes another ball game. So this is a, a very interesting case again, um, because not very often do you get cytomegalovirus mm -hmm. pneumonia. Um, so in this situation, you had to manage the anxiety of the patients. Uh, you again, you had to explore your diagnostic um, apparatus to try to get to the bottom of the case. Again, that's where the internists, they had to do so many tests. We use laboratory a lot yeah. because the laboratory is the key of most mm -hmm. of what we do. So to get at the bottom of that. So there are quite a lot of uh, success stories. Um, um, so some of these conditions, when you get them, diagnose them, get them well, uh, they come back very thankful to you. Mm. Okay. So what are the advice that you usually give to the patients who approached you? Yes, the advice I will give to patients uh, in this environment, which I have, is, again, it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. to change people's culture. There is what is called self-medication. Now, if I had to contrast that from uh, UK, where I have spent most of my time, mm -hmm. uh, people here do a lot of more than usual self-medication. Yes, mm -hmm. it's understandable if you have fever, do anything, you can take Panadol or Paracetamol. But most, or some people you see here, must have taken two, three sort of antibiotics, or have taken mm -hmm. antacids, or taken a protein pump inhibitor. There are a lot of self-medications mm -hmm. going on here. So which is what I will like people in this environment to be aware. Um, taking too much antibiotics without having a diagnosis and not only predisposes you to in future developing antibiotic resistance. It's always good and also not the same antibiotics we are given last time will cure the next disease. Mm -hmm. So some people say, oh this was when I had sore throat, this was what I was given. And they go back to that. So self medication beyond taking paracetamol is I will not advise you to do self medication beyond paracetamol. 
So it's when you are well, it's better for you to seek advice so that you have a correct uh, a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to take medicine, you take medicine as uh, advised. Okay. Um, in terms of internal medicine, like I said, if you have a symptom that is fairly vague, mm -hmm. yeah, your best starting point is internal medicine. So if you're tired, you have a pain left, right, and center, you're feeling dizzy, um, so your yes, starting point is internal medicine. So because he or she is the jigsaw mm -hmm. who is going to look into and trying to harmonize a symptom to come up with a diagnosis. So now lastly, what is the advice that you would like to give to our audience? Oh yes, well the advice I will give the audience is the same thing I was saying. The advice for the audience, uh, audience is avoid uh, self-medication beyond simple symptom control, say the paracetamol for fever or for pain, uh, taking something like antacid if you have stomach pain. Uh, then if it's getting beyond this, it's advisable that you seek help. Uh, in terms of a condition, a medical condition, which is not clear-cut to you and has not responded either to your self-care or you've been to ER, you're not getting any, way, uh, any headway, I um, think your, your best starting point is to see an internist. Like I said, internist is, had a very big motherboard to feed in all your symptoms and synthesize it and come up with a more appropriate uh, diagnosis. If that requires you to see another specialist, it may be in better position. Okay. So, Doctor, that was nice talking to you. Thanks a lot for Thank being here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, that was Dr. Anthony Okriki with us. Until we meet next time, this is me, Naina, signing off. Take care.